Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to restore a lightly damaged photo using Photoshop. This is one of the early lessons from my brand new photo restoration course, and it's a great introduction to the restoration process. You'll learn how to fix red eye, remove dust and scratches, and adjust contrast and exposure while keeping the original feel of the photo intact. Now, if you want to follow along, I have included a link in the description of this video where you can download the photo used in this lesson. So go ahead, download that, and then let's jump in. All right, let's go to File Open. And for this, I'm going to open the Michelle PNG. This is a scan of a photo of my little sister. And what I want to do here is do some basic restoration. So this is a color photograph, not too old. And as you can see, she has red eyes. We've got a lot of dust and scratches. And also we need to straighten out the image. So first things first, let's go ahead and get the image straightened out. So for that, I'm going to go to my crop tool. Now within the crop tool, you'll see up here, you have a ruler or a level tool. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to click and drag from the top of this edge here. and Make sure I'm straight along that edge like so. All right, then I'm going to zoom in here, close this up. So it's just the photo. Let me drag this up so we're not losing any of our original photo. And that looks good. I'm going to hit the check mark. OK, and now before I make any restorations, I want to go ahead and make a copy of this. That way I can always reference back my original. So to do that, I'm going to do Command J. And let's go ahead and call this original. And then on my layer one, let's go ahead and go to our red eye tool. And what we're going to do is click and drag and make a square around the eye. And Photoshop is going to fix the red eye. All right, then I'm going to go up here, zoom in. And the next thing I want to do is get rid of as much of the dust and scratches as I can with the dust and scratches tool. So to do that, I'm going to do command J, make another copy, and we'll call this dust and scratches. And the reason I'm doing this on its own layer is oftentimes you'll want more dust and scratch removal in areas where there's little detail and having it on its own layer allows me to put a mask on it after the fact. So I'm going to go up to filter, noise, dust, and scratches. And let's go ahead and look at this area here. And I want to look at the detail in her eyes and also the background. And right now I'm on the lowest setting. So a zero threshold and one pixel. And if I turn the preview on and off, you can see I'm already getting rid of quite a few dust modes, but I'm also getting a rid of a little bit of detail in the eyes. So let's start moving our threshold up until we get that detail back. And it looks like it's right around here where I have that detail that I want. And let's go ahead and add, make this two pixels. And you can see right away that that's having not a great effect. So I think leaving it on one pixel and let's hit OK. And already we've gotten rid of so many of our dust and scratches there. And now I'm going to do Command J again. And let's go ahead and call this one 01. That way we know that this is with one pixel of dust and scratch removal. I'm going to go up here. And now I could just do it again, which is what would happen if I selected this. But if I hold down Option, it'll bring it up with the same settings. And here I want to try two pixels and maybe increase my threshold a little bit. And I'm just looking at the detail here. I want to make sure I'm not losing too much detail. 
but still getting rid of dust and scratches. So it looks like around 20 looks good. Let's hit OK. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and add a mask. And then with a black brush, I want to paint over the higher detail areas of her face and hair. So her eyes, her nose, her lips, and parts of her dress here where there's high detail. I want to make sure I haven't lost any detail in my the important parts of my image here. And by painting them with black, I'm showing through to my original dust and scratches where I lost no detail. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to make a new layer up here and I'm going to do Shift Option Command E. And just a good practice when you're working on any restoration is to use a lot of layers. You want to be able to go back as much as possible to any earlier iteration where you might have lost details so that you can always pull that detail back. Here, I want to go up here and just use my spot healing brush tool and just paint over some of these scratches that are still in my image. So that one there, any larger dots as well. Okay, that looks good. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to see if I can get a little more detail in these kind of overexposed areas, maybe a little more detail out of this. So to do that, I'm gonna use the camera raw filter. Now when I'm using the camera raw filter, again, I wanna be able to go backwards. So what I'm gonna do is convert this to a smart object. That way when I add my camera raw filter to it, it adds it as a filter that I can go back and adjust. Okay, so in Camera Raw, I'm going to take down the highlights, see if I can get a little more detail in her, and then maybe bring up the shadows a bit. And if we zoom in here, you can see a little bit better the effect that that's having. Also, we can go down here to our detail and see if noise reduction helps this image. Now, anytime you're doing noise reduction, you want to be really careful that you're not getting rid of detail. So we might counter that with a bit of sharpening. And that's looking really nice. Now, I still feel like she's a little too bright here, but I don't want to get rid of the brightness on her face. So maybe what I'll do in this scenario is go ahead and do a radial gradient, kind of select this part right here and see maybe if I can take down the exposure there just a bit. So something like that. All right, I'm going to hit OK. And then the last thing I might do here is just accentuate the highlights in her eyes. I feel like that always helps to kind of bring an image to life. Hers are actually pretty good, meaning she already has some pretty good highlights. But let's go ahead and select those. And I'm just going to add a curve layer here. And maybe pump those up just a little bit. And here we can see the before and the after. So there you have it. That's how you restore light damage in Photoshop. And hopefully through this, you learn some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use in your own projects. Now, as I mentioned, this is just one of 16 lessons in the brand new photo restoration course. In the full course, you'll go beyond basic fixes to tackle torn images, light leak damage, faded colors, and more with the help of both traditional tools and AI power techniques inside of Photoshop. You'll also get 10 bonus scans to practice on, and for a limited time, 
I'm including three of my popular asset packs with the course. Now, if you want to check out the full course, just follow the link in the description. It's releasing on May 6th, so if you're watching this before then, you can get on the wait list for early bird access. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like or a comment. I do read them all. And finally, here's a trailer for my new course. It's one that I've been asked to do for quite some time, and I think you're really going to enjoy it.